We're speaking with Andreas Kisslinger, whose company Lightcast is bringing Roku over-the-top services to lots of small companies and, and churches. Uh, he comes from Austria. Which city primarily? I'm born in Salzburg and I spent a lot of time in Styria, uh, where Arnold Schwarzenegger is from, and um, also in Vienna, where I still have a home. Which city does, did Mozart come from? Salzburg. He was born in Salzburg, but of course he played a lot at the royal courts in Vienna and most of Central Europe. Is Salzburg also famous for music of, of, of composers besides Mozart? Uh, oh yeah, ma many uh, other composers actually came from there and then one of the uh, more modern music um, or movies, uh, if you wish, are filmed and shot primarily in Salzburg, The Sound of Music, uh, which is actually a movie that, oddly enough, most Austrians don't even know about. It was primarily produced for the American market, um, and uh, it's really fascinating for Austrians to discover it. <laughs> but it has actually a really important story. Yeah. So there's, there's a subtext to that story, which has to do with uh, their manager, Max, people remember from the movie, uh, who had to leave the performance because as the Nazis were taking over uh, Austria, uh, what was that part uh, historically? Well, um, I personally uh, wasn't born at that time yet, but of course I have um, uh, spoken to many that have been and even my grandparents and their parents. Um, and uh, shared also part of that history and how they experienced it. Uh, it was a really terrible time of desperation throughout most of Central Europe. Um, Austria especially was uh, uh, one of the big, big losers of the First World War, uh, losing the majority of their ter territory. So uh, leading up to the First World War, Austria was a huge empire and uh, that spanned from the east, almost the eastern czar of Russia, all the way to the west, uh, to France. And um, it lost most of that during the First World War, and people were very poor. Unemployment rate was the highest uh, ever in, in history, and uh, people didn't know exactly how to uh, feed their families any longer. And um, so those were the years in between the two world war. And that kind of um, created a situation, a vacuum that opened up people to crazy ideas such as anti-Semitism and uh, just to, to find someone that they could could blame and uh, then leaderships coming in such as uh, terrible people like, like Hitler that could tell them lies um, uh, and uh, that people would believe uh, just because they were so desperate and didn't know what else to do they just just embraced anything that promised some kind of hope but uh, but very quickly many woke up and realized that that was the worst decision their country ever made and um, people think of uh, Nazi Germany they think of Adolf Hitler as the Chancellor was he German he was actually born in Austria uh, just on the border to Germany uh, north of Salzburg and um, and he studied in Vienna and he w actually applied for uh, an, an art school in Vienna was turned down. He was denied and uh, we all hope now in hindsight that he uh, wished and uh, he would have been accepted because maybe he would have become a, an art student, who knows. Um, but um, he, he then ventured north to Germany where he felt that he had more opportunities and chances and then became yeah, this terrible dictator. Um, that caused uh, this this terrible second. What, what was the term for the uh, annexation or the, the the joining of Austria with Germany? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, the German word would be Anschluss, um, and it was simply uh, Hitler came back with his armed forces and just swept into Austria and it, and simply adopted Austria and, and added it onto the Third Reich. Um, now Austria was much smaller at that time and in a very weak state and had absolutely zero chance. Um, and, then, and then people were confused and uh, didn't know what to believe. So, um, so it was a really, really uh, desperate time in, in Central Europe. Were there concentration camps in Austria? Yes, yes, there were uh, several. I think um, I personally have visited Mauthausen uh, several times for um, uh, uh, prayer and um, and also repentance uh, events. Is it Mauthausen Gusen? 
Um, it could be, yeah, Gussing is in the, is in the area. Uh -huh. And um, also I visited Mauthausen as a student uh, in, in high school. And um, actually as a, stu as a uh, kid growing up in Austria uh, during both um, uh, middle school and, and uh, elementary school, but also later on in high school, uh, we, uh, we were uh, speaking a lot about um, the history in the Second World War and, and, uh, and anti-Semitism and the teachers were trying to very, very strongly make sure that this is never repeated again in history, making sure that we understood as children what happened, how wrong the decisions were that our parent uh, um, uh, generation made. And, um, and, uh, and we, if we were taken to, to the concentration camps by our t uh, school teachers to see it firsthand. Uh, they also brought in uh, at, at different instances um, several times uh, wit witnesses and, and survivors from concentration camps to our classrooms to share their stories and um, which was really really important for us growing up understanding the uh, the reality of it uh, of the European countries I have heard that uh, Germany has done the most to bring uh, a teaching education uh, about uh, anti-Semitism. Is Austria also in that category of not trying to hide it? Uh? Absolutely, I would say so, uh, very much. At least that was my experience growing up. Um, maybe I got lucky and I was in schools that, where that was really emphasized, but um, I, I vividly remember many, many years um, uh, that being a very strong topic uh, in, in history classes and uh, geography classes and, um, and, and teacher doing, teachers doing really a good job in educating us. And, um, and then, of course, also growing up in church, uh, being a, a a, a preacher's kid uh, in a Pentecostal church that was always, always a, a, a big topic in, in prayer nights and in repentance. I mean, to this very day, um, my dad's church every uh, Saturday and Sunday prays for the uh, country of Israel and for all Jews around the world. I grew up with that, um, learning, uh, doing that, even around the um, dinner table as a family um, uh, on a daily basis. So uh, we very strongly grew up believing that who blesses Israel is blessed indeed. And, and also to, to walk in a spirit of repentance um, over what happened. So. Uh, my personal uh, experience is, is that, yes, this was uh, a, a, a very strongly emphasized um, by our school systems and education, and our churches, too, especially. It's marvelous. Mm -hmm. are, are there uh, reports, uh, accurate reports, that anti-Semitism is making a resurgence in some parts of the country? Uh, yeah, so uh, I, I believe there have always been people that just simply never repented from it, never turned around, um, even previous generations, and that carried over to the next generation. Um, uh, I personally don't know people that uh, that harbor that still, mm, but um, but I've heard, and, and of course also uh, speaking to many, um, that their parents, for instance, still had a, a, a very critical um, attitude towards not only Jews but also other people of other um, uh, nationalities. Um, but the next generation, my generation, uh, was very different. Um, and, uh, and now, today, it's, it's a very different situation. Today it's not really uh, about um, Jews or a very sp one specific group, but about how to handle migration. The, the new hot topic is what do we do uh, with millions and millions of um, immigrants uh, streaming in, uh, primarily now from Syria and Afghanistan. So it's an entirely different situation. So the question is, what, how do we handle that? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So the uh, uh, immigrants that you're referring to, typically they're Muslim, and Muslims bear a very anti-Semitic attitudes, much worse in this generation than anyone since the Nazis, for instance. Is there any uh, awareness or cognizant uh, uh, of that uh, that these immigrants are, are bringing anti-Semitism back into the Hellenic countries? Yeah, absolutely. Which is which is uh, exactly one reason for why uh, this is such a. Um, a hot topic right now, but also one that polarizes extremely. So you have people that are 
very critical towards the uh, open, um, uncontrolled um, immigration and migration, uh, while others want to keep bring everyone in and, and believe that is the, the more modern, liberal way of, of seeing things. And so uh, everyone is trying to, to do the right thing, but um, uh, right now what, what I think is really great is that, uh, that God has uh, somehow appointed a, uh, a new leadership in, in Austria, for instance, in, in, in that little tiny country in, in Central Europe, um, that, is, uh, that has a, a new chancellor at the top, a very young, very talented person who sees exactly that danger that you just mentioned, and that is uh, that n uh, not only is it an issue uh, that we have to deal with and, and, and uh, find a solution for uh, the, the uncontrolled migration, but it is bringing is, or is flooding Europe uh, with, with Muslim and Islamic mindsets. Racist uh, uh, against Christians exactly, as well. Against Christians and against Jews. So he's very alert of that uh -huh. and is trying to uh, find solutions and also propose to the European Union um, uh, various uh, different new laws that should be passed to, in order to control that better and um, yeah so so this it's very uh, a very unique um, situation today uh, does the left leftist parties do they team with uh, these Muslim immigrants do they use it as a cause that they call anti-racism yeah. to help their own leftist agenda yeah yeah absolutely in my opinion um, uh, left and right isn't really uh, just an axis, uh, but it actually is a circle. The extremes meet each other at the very bottom. Right. The very uh, um, right extreme and left extreme have very similar world views. It's, uh, it's shocking. Um, so the f further out you go in extremists, the more actually you become like the other side. It's insane, and um, and I can see that often actually as uh, that this leftist movement is it, it's been very strong and, and, and aggressive in in most countries of Europe, in Austria as well, in the past decades. Um, that uh, uh, that just uh, call for a tolerance towards everything um, and anything, but at the same time it becomes very intolerant uh, uh, on its own. Uh, so it's an oxymoron, really, and very hypocritical. And um, and it uses um, uh, this this uh, new. Uh, liberal mindset of tolerance uh, to as a shield and 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 uh, also to to bring uh, and accept more Islamic and uh, Muslim mindsets thus and anti-semitic mindsets uh, again in Europe which is very dangerous in my opinion so we we need to to watch out for that and and not think it's it's the right extreme only it is the left extreme just as much that is that is doing that yeah that that's a risk yeah Absolutely.